Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more R slash Jamana Butthole. <laughs> and if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's jump straight in to today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account titled, whew, get this one. Am I the asshole for leaving in the middle of the vacation because my boyfriend's mum tried to sleep in our bed? My boyfriend, 27, Paul and I, 24 female, have been dating for a year. His mum is intrusive as fuck, but calls herself the protector. She'd insert herself in literally everything when it comes to Paul. Paul does notice her behavior, but says he's learning to set boundaries with time. She invited me to join her family to go on a vacation. I agreed, though I still had to pay. If I am a guest, then am I expected to pay, though? Anyways, we went together, and this entire time she kept following me and Paul everywhere, preventing us from being alone. I complained, but she reminded me that this is a family vacation, not a romantic getaway. So fast forward to day two at night. At 1 a.m., Paul and I were already in bed and we heard a loud knocking on the door. Paul stayed in bed and I went to open the door and found his mum in a nightgown. I asked if I could help and she told me she couldn't sleep in her room after constantly hearing weird noises. I said, well, did you check with the staff to see what it was? She said no, then acted scared and said that the room was probably haunted and she wanted to spend the night with us. Before I could respond, she immediately rushed to my side of the bed and got in. Paul asked her what happened and she told him about the ghosts Then asked if it was okay if she slept with us. I was baffled. He said yes, but I got angry and repeatedly said, what the fuck? She told me I could sleep with them or go sleep in her room if I wanted a bed or sleep on the floor. Paul was okay with all those options, but I blew up and told them how fucked up that was and said that I was no longer intending on continuing this trip from hell, and then I started packing. Paul yelled at me after he failed to convince me to stay. I went to the hotel, spent the rest of the night there, then got on the first flight home. He never stopped trying to contact me via Viber, WhatsApp, and Facebook after I refused to return his phone calls. He texted me a bunch saying I should have stayed and not made a joke out of him and spoil the whole thing for his family. When I pointed out how inappropriate his mum's behavior was, he called me nuts to think his mum was being inappropriate. Moreover, that I have a twisted mentality and view on his innocent relationship with his mum. He wants me to fix this mistake once they get back, but I haven't replied. Absolutely not the asshole for putting up with that. That is, that's something else, isn't it? And to me, if he's willing to let her cross boundaries like happened that night, oh my word, I couldn't imagine being in that room. Then, you know, both mum and Paul are willing to trample all over you, no matter what, to, to let mum get her away. And it reminded me of a story we covered maybe a week or so ago where, you know, the, the husband or the boyfriend at the time secretly was going to take their mum on holiday with them and this was basically the next step luckily in that story the the wife or the girlfriend left at the airport but this might have been what happened after but miserable airport says not the arsehole it's called emotional incest you are right to leave you will never be put first and you need to decide if this is what you want for your future status pattern says not the arsehole the only mistake you made was dating him in the first place cut your losses now you did nothing wrong and that behavior is disturbing honestly i'll send him a parting message along the lines of i'm sorry but as you cannot set boundaries with your mother i will no longer be continuing this relationship her crawling into bed to sleep with us, mainly you, was the last straw in a long line of instances that you failed to support me on. Your mother wants to be the only woman in your life and she has succeeded in getting her way. Hope you wake up one day and realize she is deliberately sabotaging your relationships so that she can be your one and only. Good luck with your future relationships. You will need it. James Chevy says, not the arsehole. That's fucking weird. And if he chose his mummy this time, he'll always choose her. Thankfully, this happened so you could find out. The Barker says, not the arsehole. That's weird for a 27-year-old man to sleep in the same bed as his parent. Run from this one. His mother will always be ahead of you to him. 
and Opie replied saying, oh, they saw nothing wrong with it. They called me the weird one and she even had an attitude and was like, honey, it's not like I took over your marital bed. Like what the fuck's that shit mean? She even said I was power hungry and attention seeking. Charles Bronson says not the asshole, don't respond. Leave him to his mummy issues because this crap just gets worse with time. ETA, there was no noise. His mum is threatened by your relationship with him. She doesn't want any competition for his attention. She will do anything she can to get between you and he will always side with her. You will have a miserable life if you stay with him. Song Seng says, not the asshole, that family is messed up. Good to know before you made a commitment. Get out now. Parents do not sleep with adult children of the opposite sex and they don't share a bed with adult children and their partners. Now, what would you do in this situation if you was OP? I can only see one way and that's getting out of there. But do you have a different opinion on the matter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Critical Value 1511 who says, am I the asshole for not giving my son part of his trust fund early because he refuses to sign a prenup with his fiance? Some background. I have four kids. My eldest, John, 27 male, was with my first wife who died when he was five. I eventually remarried and got two stepdaughters, Lisa, 25 female, and Anne, 18 female. Then my second wife and I had Mike, 13 male. My wife and I made sure to give them comfortable lives. When John and Lisa graduated from university, we gifted them condo units. We will do the same when Anne and Mike graduate. Also, all of them have trust funds that will be released when they turn 30. I'm quite proud of my kids. John and Lisa graduated from top universities. John has a high paying job as an engineer while Lisa pursued a master's degree in business while she worked in marketing. Eventually, she started her own marketing consulting firm while being a part owner of a spa. John recently got engaged to his girlfriend of two years and, and they want to get married by the end of this year. She seems nice. However, she doesn't earn as much as him. My son spends a lot of money on her, on dates and expensive gifts. I understand that it's his money and he can spend it however he wants. She also moved in with him in the condo that I gave him. And as far as I know, she doesn't pay her share of utilities and association fees. And now John is asking to get part of his trust fund so he could use it for a wedding, since his fiance doesn't have much money to contribute for their wedding. Now, here's where I might be the asshole. I told him I'd release part of his trust fund early if he draws up a prenup with her. He got angry and told me I was being unfair because I released half of Lisa's trust fund last year to help put up her business. He told me that I was playing favorites. I told him that Lisa did something worthwhile with her trust fund and while a wedding is worthwhile, I told him it doesn't seem safe to use his fund for a wedding to a girl who doesn't bring much to the table. I told him that I just wanted him to have some security by drawing up a prenup. He got angrier and said I was implying that his fiance is a gold digger. My wife and the rest of the family refused to take sides. Am I the arsehole? Now, I've got to say, I feel in the middle of this one. You know, for the initial question about signing a prenup, I think prenups are a good idea. I know he's going to get the money in three years anyway, but in general, I think prenups are a good idea. But where you became the arsehole to me is the way you talk about her, the way you talk about your son's partner. When you first started talking about her, on the second line it said, you know, they want to get married by the end of this year. She seems nice. However, she doesn't earn as much as him. My son spends a lot of money on her, on dates and expensive gifts. And I just felt like it went on and on and, you know, John said in the end that he was implying that his fiance is a gold digger and that's the way it did feel to me. There was no talking about how she makes him happy, how they get on together. It was just your girlfriend who doesn't bring much to the table. And yes, again, I understand, you know, wanting your son to have security for that money with the prenup. I think that's the safe choice. But the way you talk about fiance, I think I would have to say you're the arsehole. I know, I know it's not the initial question or whatever. But the way you're dealing with it, I think makes you an asshole to me. But Lizzie says, I don't think you're the asshole for the condition of the prenup in order to have early access to his trust fund. But I think you're the asshole for saying his fiance doesn't bring much to the table. Why do you feel that way about her? 
solely because she makes less money than your son. Arisian Impulse says you're implying his fiance is a gold digger. That being said, as a family law attorney, I'm certainly aware of how much protection a prenup could grant your son. I think it's a wise idea and it sounds like you approached it the wrong way. At the end of the day, if he needs the money that badly, he can always wait until he's 30. You are not wrong, but you're the asshole for being insensitive and pretentious in your explanation of why. That's probably far better than I could say it. <laughs> Cartwright James says, your son John is 27. That means he's going to get the full trust fund amount in three years. Unless there's a really compelling reason to believe that John's fiance is not trustworthy. Is this really a wise move? You can really harm your relationship with your son by saying what you've said. Unless it's clear that there is a substantial risk to justify this, I don't think it's a good idea. It's just three years difference. Without knowing more about John's fiance, it's impossible to say how reasonable you are being. But I'm going to guess that if you had good info, that would indicate that she is likely a gold digger. You would have included it. Judgment, you're the arsehole. Accurate Fisherman says you're the arsehole, not for having reservations necessarily. Although this does feel like classism because her earning potential doesn't seem to meet your requirements. In quotes, it doesn't seem safe to use this fund for a wedding to a girl who doesn't bring much to the table. Then goes on to say, this right here is the main reason you're an asshole. Some people here will say you're within your legal right to withhold the money, but this is about morality. You've given no info about her character. You've only said she doesn't earn as much. You want her to seem like a gold digger, but you are the one who is all about the money. Monster Moon says everyone should get a prenup. That being said, the way you went about it was horrible. You clearly think that you and your family are better than this woman based solely on the fact that you make more money. That's gross, super gross. Your kid is right. You did basically call her a gold digger. This could have been presented as a way to protect both of them in the event that something goes sideways, but nah, you decided to be 100% an asshole about it. You're the asshole. Now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? Do you think the prenup is a good idea or do you have another opinion on the matter? As always, I would love to hear it. So let me know in the comments below and let's move on to another story. Now, before we do move into this next story, there is mentions of infertility and miscarriages as well. So if you would like to skip the story, please use the timestamps down in the description below. And now we're gonna move into it. So this one is from Rainbow Baby, who says, am I the asshole for not allowing my cousin to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower for my Rainbow Baby? This is one thing that you read about on Facebook and think there is no way people actually act like this until it happens to you. My husband and I are finally expecting our rainbow baby after years of infertility and multiple miscarriages. It's safe to say we and our family are very freaking excited. My mother is probably the most excited. She's been planning our baby shower and making decorations for months. She's been the biggest help during this exciting yet scary pregnancy. A few weeks ago, my aunt told my mother and I that my cousin is pregnant. We are very happy for her. However, my aunt said their plan is to announce her pregnancy at my baby shower, since we are having a big party anyways. She says it's not a big deal and we can both share the day. I said absolutely not because we've been waiting for this day forever and it should be all about me and my rainbow baby. My mother is on my side and told my aunt that they better not announce anything at the party. My aunt dropped it and nothing else was ever said. Last Saturday was my baby shower. It was everything I've waited for. Everything is going good. No one has announced my cousin's pregnancy. When it was time for us to eat my cake, my aunt said, hold on, hold on everyone, and went outside to her car to grab something. That was the moment I knew something was up. My mother and I follow her outside and my aunt decided to bring a cake announcing my cousin's pregnancy and some presents for my cousin. My mother immediately told my aunt that she will not be bringing those back into the rec center and they will not be ruining my day. My aunt started throwing a fit, screaming, this is a baby shower, it's for babies. Cousin is having a baby too, so this day is about her too. My cousin now joins the screaming and says how pissed off she is that everything is always about me and why do we always have to be happy for me? They would not stop screaming. 
so they were kicked out by the rec center security. And half our family was upset that I wouldn't let her have a moment at my shower, so they left too. Now everyone is bashing my mother, myself, and Rainbow Baby on Facebook, group family texts, anything at all. So Reddit, was I the arsehole for not allowing my cousin to announce her pregnancy at my Rainbow Baby shower? If anyone has any questions or wants to know more, I will gladly go into detail in the comments. Thanks. Edit, I am trying my hardest to reply to everyone who took the time to comment. Thank you all so much. Firstly, OP, a huge congratulations on your pregnancy. And I'm sorry that happened at your baby shower. And soon as you got to the part where you said my aunt dropped it and nothing else was ever said. And then you said last Saturday was my baby shower. I thought, oh no, here we go. And it always goes through my head. Like, like you said at the very beginning, there's no way, there's no way people actually act like this. And I think what goes through their heads, you know, someone's special day. And we've seen it in like multiple occasions on this channel, like weddings, birthdays, someone wants to announce something on someone's special day. And you're like, what goes through your head to think, you know, that's an appropriate thing to do. And not only because like, you know, it's just hugely inappropriate in general, but also the financial aspect. I know this is not the big thing of it, but OP and family has put like money into providing this party for people, this get together. And then they think that they can just, you know, we'll share this day. Ah, oh, we'll take half of this day that you've put money towards and we'll celebrate my occasion as well. I mean, <laughs> come on now. I'd be hugely embarrassed, but I can't believe, you know, they, that she even got went outside and thought, I'm going to go and get the cake. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. I got an announcement to make. Just gee whiz. But Mooseheart says, not the arsehole. Absolutely not the arsehole. This was your day that you've been trying to make possible for years. If she wanted to steal the spotlight, she should have spent the money, time and effort on her own shower or announcement party. I would have absolutely lost my shit and told her to get fucked. You and your mum are 100% in the right. Unable Zone says not the asshole. In my opinion, this is the equivalent to proposing at a wedding. You don't go to someone's party and make it all about yourself. Even if it wasn't a rainbow baby, she would still be in the wrong for trying to make your baby shower about her. Congratulations on your baby. Lord Nam says, in a word, no. Not the arsehole. When will people get it through their heads that it's inappropriate to co-opt someone else's celebration to make milestone announcements? To everyone tutting you and your mother, it was not a celebration they planned for their milestone and if someone did it to them, they'd be upset. Capricious Penguin says not the arsehole. They sound like a bunch of entitled monsters. I suggest you deactivate your Facebook for a while and block their numbers because you don't need this shit when you are pregnant. Congratulations on your rainbow baby. Don't let these jerks ruin your joy. And one more from Mara who says not the arsehole. Your cousin's mother had a lot of nerve. A baby shower is designed to shower one mother with baby gifts unless stated otherwise in the invitation. Now, what would you do in this situation if you was OP. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and let's have another story. And our next story comes from Help With Lunch who says, am I the asshole for getting angry at my wife for not packing me a lunch for work? The other day, I, 29 male, overslept for work. It was completely my fault. I'd stayed up too late, binging a series and slept through my alarm. I'd woken up about 30 minutes later than I should have. There is almost no worse feeling than realizing that you've overslept, so I woke up in a panic. I immediately called my boss to let him know I was running late and then began a frantic effort to get ready for work as quickly as possible. My wife, 28 female, doesn't always remember day to day when I have to be at work since my starting time varies by a few hours. So she didn't necessarily know that I was running late and until I called up to her and told her. As I was about to jump in the shower, I yelled up to her, and asked her, hun, I'm running late. I really need you to be quick and throw a lunch together for me. Just a sandwich and some fruit and chips and a couple of bottles of pop. She called down, no. And I yelled back up, please, just this once, help me out. Here's the thing. My wife has some weird hang up about packing lunches for me. She grew up in a family where her father always expected her mother to pack his lunch for him. And according to her, he was kind of entitled about it. So while my wife doesn't mind cooking dinner for me or doing my laundry, 
Not that I always expect it, she just has a problem with packing the lunch for me as it makes her feel like too much of a servant. I don't totally get it, but it's her thing and it's never been a big deal before the other day. I just always pack my own lunch. However, even after asking this one time, when I came upstairs, I found that my lunch cooler was empty. I looked over at my wife just sitting on the couch on her phone and said, really? Were you too busy? She answered, pack your own lunch, it's not my job. She only works part time and it absolutely beyond pissed me off to watch her sitting there leisurely scrolling through her phone. Well, she knew I was stressed and scrambling. I left without a lunch and had to buy food from the vending machine to get me through the day. When I got home, I was still pissed and we got into a huge fight. She told me that I knew her boundary about packing a lunch for me. I told her she could put her hang up aside that one time to help me out. Edit. Thanks to everyone who's taking time to respond. A few things just based on questions I'm getting. One, we both do housework. I won't say it's completely split down the middle. She probably does more laundry, cooking and dishes than I do, but I do that stuff fairly often as well and we both clean at about equal rates. I also do more of the yard work. Two, people think my wife may have some childhood trauma about this. I probably didn't explain it well, but it's not nearly to that level. Her father is a decent guy. She'd tell you that herself. It's just kind of go under her skin watching her mum always pack his lunch and him not to appreciate it much. Three, I could technically have food delivered there, but given the location and where I am in the building, it's just far more of a pain than it's worth. Four, finally, I understand that it was my fault that I overslept. I'm not blaming anyone else. It's very rare for me, but this one time I just let myself get too caught up in what I was watching. What upset me though is that if my wife overslept and stressed and frantic, I would have helped her out in any way possible to get her out the door as fast as possible, even if it would have just saved her two minutes. I wouldn't have sat with my feet up playing video games and just watched her struggle. That's my side of it. Well, hers is that she's not going to ever pack me a lunch and, and I know that and that's that. And we're gonna start straight away with Puffer Lump 212 who says, gonna go against the curve and say, no one's an asshole here. It was one lunch when you were running late and each of us has been late at some point. Marriage should be a partnership helping one another and this was a situation where some help would have been nice. Amy Burr says, meh, everyone sucks here. You know your wife's boundary but still asking and being upset when she says no. Your wife refusing to help despite that being the point of marriage. Partners help each other even if it's doing something they don't normally do. Of course, this is within reason. For future, pack your lunch the night before. Easy grab and go. Getting by curious says, not the arsehole. Going against the grain massively here, but marriage is a partnership. You asked her this one time to help you and she refused because her dad was an arsehole. Yes, oversleeping was your fault, but it was a mistake. It's not like you did it intentionally and partners are supposed to help each other, even when it's inconvenient. And even when whatever rut they're in is their fault, barring someone continually doing it. But that wasn't the case here. I cannot fathom me or my partner ever refusing to do something that would help the other. Even if it's something we don't like to do or even have a hang up about, it was one time. So it's a little bit of a ridiculous hill she chose to die on for someone she loves in my opinion. Jay Darcy says, everyone sucks here. What a stupid trivial thing to get in a huge fight about. Could she have helped you out? Sure, that would have been a nice thing for her to do, but it is your fault for waking up late. Yes, and also you did know her boundary. Even if you think it's a stupid boundary, it's one she made quite clear to you. And you didn't even ask, you kind of demanded, which is where you're more of an asshole. You can ask, but don't just demand. ARC says you're the asshole. Maybe if you'd ask politely instead of barking, I need you to make me a lunch, she might have had a different response. She probably finds it degrading to be treated like hired help. And there was a whole mixed bunch of opinions there and they continued with that sort of format as well. But what do you guys make of this particular situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, as always, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for getting involved on the daily, being involved in the channel on Twitter and wherever you are. It's just mind-blowing, honestly. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.